Hey, good to see everybody. All right, so we'll have a group out there today. We'll rest some guys like we talked about, normal plan. Um, and I think we got, you know, one more day here, an acclimation period, have a day off tomorrow, get them back on Monday. So uh, like the work we're putting in and got to put another good day uh, out there today. Do you have any update on Ronnie? A... Yeah, no update. Uh, we'll hold him out today, um, and then we'll kind of just take it as it goes. So, so who are you resting today? We'll have to see. And is that a hamstring? Uh, it's a lower extremity. Yes, we'll do, we'll do hockey terms. Yeah, he, he'll be fine. Kevin, how uh, I don't know, antsy are you to get the pads on? Well, I mean, I think you know the game's played with pads on, and there's certainly some more things you can do uh, just in terms of keeping guys safe when you have the pads on. You, you feel good about some of the drills, and, and you know that uh, guys are protected. Uh, it's a, a physical game. So I, I know that the guys are chomping at the bit to get to that point. Uh, we're just going to make sure that we ramp it up and are safe when we get there, and we still continue to practice safe. But it's football, so uh, excited to when the pads do get on. How much of, of last year was a learning experience for Austin Hooper? Because he talked about not having to block as much in uh, Atlanta. Yeah, I think Hoop uh, had a nice season for us. Uh, you know, he – he really battled uh, in a lot of moments, and, and I mentioned it last year, you know, in a lot of big moments where we're running the ball. He was at the point of attack. He was making big blocks. I mean, think back to uh, even Baker's run at the end of the Pittsburgh game uh, to, to, to seal the game. Hoops at the point of attack. So he just did a lot of nice things for us, and, and we're going to grow uh, his role. And, and uh, I thought he just uh, really understands now in year two how we plan to use them, and, and, and again, I, I do believe his role can grow. Coach Petzing just said that he thinks you guys have three number one tight ends, so... You Must be you nice for that tight end coach, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no but I mean, considering how you value those guys, do you hope to, I don't know, feature them more? Or? Yeah, I think we like that room. Uh, we, we feel like there's versatility there with those guys. They all have... Uh, things that they do differently. One guy does really well, maybe the other guy doesn't. Uh, so it's just about us finding ways to uh, put them in position to succeed. So, uh, yeah, of course, we, we like that room. Austin told us that really all three guys can play every spot in the basketball. What kind of rarity and luxury is that? You know, versatility is so big. We talk about it all the time. So that room in particular, when you have tight ends that can line up outside, can line up in line, can line up in the backfield, I just think it gives you – uh, a bunch of different ways to attack a defense. So the fact that we have multiple guys that we can do, do in that regard, it, it gives us an opportunity to put all three on the field at a time, uh, which not everybody does. But uh, And then, then when we have those three on the field, we can run a variety of different offenses. Kevin, were you a tight end for a moment back in your Never. 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 Mm -hmm. The evolution of that position, I mean, we see guys now, you know, they're unbelievably athletic, et cetera. Do you envision – game evolving continually though around that position with teams finding better ways to use them, defenses having a scheme to stop them, et cetera? Yeah, potentially, Tom. I, I do think, you know, sometimes you get a wide receiver that you can line up in the backfield. Uh, I think back to we had Percy Harvin at the Vikings for a bunch of years and lined him up at running back. So it's really a, a matter of the more you can do from a positional standpoint. We have running backs that we feel real comfortable lining up outside and throwing them the ball. So. Listen, there, there are certain players that are uh, do are, are maybe more one-dimensional, uh, you know, are across the league, and, and they're great players that way. But it's just the classic: the more you can do. Do you think it's possible to see a player bigger than Miles Garrett, but 58 looks like he is? What do you think we have in him so far? Yeah, Malik's done a nice job going all the way back through the spring, through the workouts in the building. Uh, he's really taken to what we're asking him to do. He's good in the meeting room working really hard. So excited to see uh, what he can do. How much of a long shot is it for a guy who hasn't played four years? Yeah, I, I think we'll see, Tony. I think that's the fun part of training camp. It's, it's a competition. Uh, when, Like we talked about, when the pads go on, I think it'll be uh, you'll, you'll see some guys separate themselves. So I think that's the fun part in this. Uh, Malik ha is going to have an opportunity, so we'll see. Hey, Kevin, uh, two-part question here. With the fans here yesterday, did you think there was some added energy? If so, how do you think the offense Yeah, definitely uh, more energy out here, uh, and, and I think the guys uh, enjoyed it. 
Uh, the, fa the fans were loud. They were boisterous. They were into it. So uh, I think offense, defense, I think everybody responds to it well. Um, but, I, you know, I think that's also part of this season is you're going to have full stadiums again. Uh, so, so dealing with the crowd and maybe a, a hostile crowd, not like this crowd here, uh, you're going to have to you're going to operate uh, in those environments. What, what kind of progress have you seen from Andrew Billings and just what he's had to do to get back after this injury? Yeah, he, Andrew's d done a great job. You know, I I hadn't met him. Uh, you know, for, so we finally met each other uh, this spring. Uh, but really, good person, uh, understands what we're trying to get done. Powerful. Uh, so excited to have him out there. Uh, Chris Kiffin uh, told us that, that Billings lost 20 pounds um, to get to the range you guys wanted. Was that um, between, was that like over the course of the off season or between mini camp and, and coming back here for training camp? Is that a HIPAA violation? <laughs> uh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, Andrew did a great job uh, working on his body. Uh, he, he really did. He, he's, uh, he's in a good spot. He's extremely powerful. Uh, just you should hear the weight coaches talk about his power. Uh, so he, he's in a good spot. Yeah, Chris also said he's the strongest guy he's ever seen. And then he said that wasn't hyperbole. Yeah. Does, yeah. does that come to mind for you too? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's rare. Uh, he has a rare uh, ability to, to, to move people. Kevin, you talked about the noise in the stadium. Are you guys gonna have to change signals and things playing the same team twice in a row? adjusting to I, what you didn't have to last year? I think you normally do that in the course of a season, so that may come up more often on the road. Uh, we're we're going to turn the crowd noise on next week uh, because it is something that we've been talking about for uh, a long time here. That, that's going to be new for uh, most teams, uh, having not gone through it for an entire season. So, so we'll devote a, a good portion of time to dealing with crowd no noise, silent count, all, all the things that go with that. Speaking of devoting time, how much less time have, have you had to devote toward teaching language terminology, considering, A, you have everybody back offensively just about, and then last year, um, you're in kind of a weird season with new, you know, new everything. Right. I think definitely in year two, Jake, there can be, uh, you can go a little bit faster uh, because of, like you mentioned, the terminology and com some of the conversations that you've had. and. But uh, you do start at the beginning, so you still put it, that first slide is still what we call our personnels and what we call our formation. So you may be able to go a little bit faster through it in those meeting rooms, but that doesn't mean that we skip it entirely. We, we really uh, believe strongly that there's a teaching progression to this thing, uh, and we're not going to skip any steps. You talked about using two and three tight ends at a time. You guys did that a lot last year. Can, what goes into the decision of, okay, this game we might use a bunch of tight ends in a different game? <laughs> Maybe we go whatever three receivers because we also have a lot of talent there. Yeah, I think Scott, every game plan is is so individualized to that opponent. Uh, so a lot of times it's where you are from a health standpoint. Uh, maybe you're you know whether it's from tight end or wide receiver, you're you're down a body or two. Uh, so that may make it adjust. It may be a team uh, has shown to struggle versus this personnel as opposed to this uh, slightly more. So it just depends on the game, uh, but. I think we're fortunate enough and we want to be versatile enough to, to pivot to different personnel groupings week to week and, and even uh, in game as well. Can I have a question about the uh, early music, your early practice music? How much of that is head coach input and how much of that is player input? Yeah, I'm not going to get into specifics on that. Uh, no, I, I make a request every once in a while, but don't assume that every song, Tom, is coming from me, okay? <laughs> hey, coach, there's been a lot of discussion lately about athletes and mental health. I know it's always been a component of training and what have you. Is it more emphasized now? Are you guys talking about it more or maybe doing other things that you had in the past? It's definitely emphasized more uh, from the course of my time being in the NFL, uh, and rightfully so. So we, we take it very seriously um, for our players, for our staff. It's something that we talk about um, because it's very real, and, and we want to make sure that everybody's uh, – mind is right, your body's right, you can't spend all this time in the weight room in the field and then you know, forget about the, the person that, that you're dealing with and, and what they have going on in, in their life. So it's certainly something that's, uh, that is very much at the forefront for us. Kevin, Malik Jackson's another guy on that D-line. He's been on great defense since he's won. That's a fine. <laughs> that is a fine. He's, Come on, Jack. He's, he's been on great defense since he won a Super Bowl. Um, what does it mean to have a guy like that in that room? Malik Jackson, you, you said yeah, that. Yeah, Malik Jackson. Uh, Malik's done a great job. He's a pro's pro. Uh, 
there, there's a schematic fit with him, but also uh, he practices hard. Uh, the, the guys enjoy being around him. He brings a lot of energy to what we're doing. And like you mentioned, he's been on a bunch of good defenses. So uh, excited to have him as part of that group. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's, it's never a bad thing when you have a, a veteran in there that, that's, that's been there, that, that's gone through it, that's been on good football teams, that understands this scheme. Uh, I think it's really important. You saying offense, defense tackle? Uh, I wouldn't say it was a concerted effort, Tony. I just think that's the the evolution of how this off season flowed, if you will. Uh, so I thought the Andrew and his crew did a great job identifying guys that fit us and that fit our scheme, fit our culture. Uh, so it's it's a competitive group. How satisfied have you? We've asked you a lot about everyone coming back and you the same system. Just how satisfied have you been with the the retention from from the players and them? Remembering everything that you were hoping that they're remembering so that you could move things forward. Yeah, I think the guys are working hard. It's not perfect. You're seeing mistakes out there that uh, that we have to clean up. We're early in our installation schedule, so, so the guys are spending some time with it. And, and you really you expect it to, to pick up as we go, you, as we get through some of these installs. You, you hope that the guys own it, um, but there's there, there's no magic to this, and you can't just – flip a switch and, and know your job. You really have to study. you got to spend some time with it. So that's kind of been the message, certainly to the young guys, make sure that they're spending enough time uh, at their craft. If I remember correctly, last year, we were talking about install two weeks before the regular season. And I realized that was a byproduct of, of circumstance. So in a normal camp situation or a semi-normal camp situation that you're dealing with this year, what's that look like for you? Like, when do you hope to beyond an install situation and you're actually yeah. getting ready for stuff. Typically, you wrap up your installation prior to that first preseason game, so we'll do that uh, prior to going down to Jacksonville. He, he looked like you gave him a chub yesterday off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was standing there, mm -hmm. helmet on, gloves on, ready to go. I mean, like, yeah. you could keep going on the next play. What does that say about him? Yeah, we're just being smart. Like I mentioned, it's acclimation period. Got a day off tomorrow, so... Certain guys will make sure that we're uh, being smart about it. But I mean, rather, I'm just talking about the way he just was like ready to go on the next play if you want. Yeah, no, he's Nick's always ready. Austin Hooper show you his Egypt pictures? He is not. No. Really good, so. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> it's like, what'd you do on summer vacation, yeah. that type of thing? Yeah. Good. That with the four H's, right? Maybe. Good idea. Yeah.